my goodness. Okay, first can I just say, the left could never do this, right? All right, thank you, thank you very much. Okay, I know it's Saturday morning, I'm extremely shocked that you're not more tired yet. There's so much energy in this room, but I think we could probably put some more into this room. So if you are a young woman in this room right now and you are having a blast at YWLS, stand up and scream and shout. <laughs> wow. All right, I want you to keep standing if this is your first time at YWLS. Wow. And keep standing if this is your first ever Turning Point USA conference or event in the conservative movement. Wow. Wow. All right, you can sit down. <laughs> Four years ago, this very weekend, in June of 2017, I was sitting in that crowd just like you are right now at my first ever event in the conservative movement. Around that time, I was a sophomore in college and I was being brutally persecuted after I recently decided to become outspoken about my conservative values in student government and on my college campus. I truly, and I kid you not, felt like I was the only conservative on a public school campus of over 30,000 people. And right around that time, I got a sponsored Facebook ad for this thing called the Young Woman's Leadership Summit that looked really pink and purple and sparkly, but I didn't really know that much about it. And knowing virtually nothing about the event, I jumped on a plane to Dallas, Texas, and from moment one of YWLS 2017, I have fallen in love with Turning Point USA over and over again every day. I knew very little about what we do here, so if you're feeling that way this weekend, you are not alone. And embarrassingly, Charlie, if you're listening to this, I'm embarrassed to tell you this, I actually had to Google who the really young guy in the white sneakers who opened the conference was named Charlie Kirk, so glad we've come a really long way since then. I was head over heels for Turning Point USA though, and I have been all in on this organization ever since. Like many of you, I went back to my college campus that fall and started a TPUSA chapter. Are any of you guys involved in our chapters with the field program? I started a chapter on my college campus and I was a student activist for two years with our organization before I transitioned into the social media, digital media, and public speaking side of things with our TPUSA family. And let me tell you, I have been through it all. Imagine the worst things that people can possibly say about you and then double or triple it and add a few threats in there too. I've gotten the failing grades. I've lost all my friends at one point. I got the death threats. My address to my college apartment where I lived, on, or lived alone was posted online without my consent. I get it. I've been there. I've been through it all. But through that process, and even today, I continue to find so much joy in just fighting for the things that I believe in and standing for my values proudly in the face of such adversity. That is the very surface level version of my story, which you can read all about in my book, Frontlines, which came out in February. And by the way, so many of you have been so supportive of my book launch. I am so grateful for all of you. I met many of you traversing back and forth and back and forth across the country this spring. And I'm doing a book signing later this afternoon, so you can buy a copy and please stop by. I would love to meet as many of you as possible. I really want to jump in to what I want to talk to you about today. But first, I want you to know this. In 2017, where I was sitting exactly where you are sitting right now, Never in my absolute craziest, wildest dreams would I ever have imagined I would be standing right here in 2021 in the role that I'm in today. Only in America does stuff like this get to happen. And these blessings that I've experienced are possible for every single one of you too. So with that being said, I really want to jump in. I want to talk about how the left is manipulating and using science as a weapon to completely erase who we are as women. The left, despite their repeated insistence that they are for women, has repeatedly shown their true colors over this last year, haven't they? They are determined to erase femininity and true womanhood from society the exact same way they've done it with men and masculinity. 
Before I jumped headfirst into this world of politics and working in the conservative movement and media every day, I dreamed of doing something dramatically different. My dream was actually to become a surgeon. Any pre-med students out there? A handful? Very small number in politics, I'll tell you what. And I've always loved science, ever since I was this big. Okay, I realize I'm not much bigger than this big. I grew up, but not up. But when I was a little girl, ever since then, I fell in love with science because I've always loved the pursuit of objective truth. I have loved understanding what is real and what is fantasy, what we have proven to be true and what we know to be false. And obviously, who can forget those super sexy lab coats and goggles, am I right? <laughs> That is what drove me, this love of science, to pursue my degree in biomedical sciences at Colorado State University, and then my master's degree in biomedical sciences, policy and advocacy at Georgetown University. A mouthful, but basically all you need to know is I'm a master of nerding out, okay? <laughs> Today though, and what I studied in school, science is not about the pursuit of objective truth. It's become about what's politically considered acceptable in modern society based on what the loudest voice, the left, deems to be correct on any given day. And this is especially true in 2021 as we constantly hear, follow the science, <laughs> at every turn from our politicians and scientists alike. Science and politics are being used together today to manipulate reality into whatever the heck the left wants. And that includes directly attacking biological women and femininity. But here's the thing, it's not new, and it follows exactly the same pattern of behavior and attack that we saw on men for the last several years with the left. Who can remember the first time they were told masculinity was inherently toxic just because of the way it is? Yeah, lots of nodding heads. True manhood has been nearly erased from society thanks to that very powerful message from the left, thanks to the left's indoctrination. And ladies, we've all gone on dates. We talked a little bit about that with Erica this morning. We all know how bad that's gone, erasing masculinity from society, right? But today, masculinity is evil. And now, femininity is too. Maybe it's not toxic, but according to the left, it is exclusive. Apparently, having XX chromosomes and identifying as a biological woman is evil because true femininity is exclusive to those who identify outside of the binary. Crazy, I know, but hang with me. This March, during the Women's History Month, leftist politicians, influencers, and A-list celebrities alike tried to completely redefine what actual womanhood is. Turns out, Women is no longer spelled W-O-M-E-N. Women is spelled W-O-M-X-N, according to the left, to accommodate those who aren't biological women and fall outside of the gender binary. So is every March just supposed to be People's History Month now? Is Women's History Month dead? Across the pond in the United Kingdom, healthcare practitioners doctors and nurses at a government-controlled National Health Service hospital are now forbidden, or they will likely lose their jobs, from using the words women or motherhood at a doctor's office. Instead, mother, as you've heard several times, thank you, it's crazy. As you've heard several times this weekend, mother has become birthing person, and the word... I love this, we hate the fake science. And the word breastfeeding is now, please bear with me because this is literally the grossest word that I've ever heard in my life, chest feeding. Yeah. Ew, that doesn't even make any sense, right? It's insane. And now our own government's federal budget proposal released this week also replaces the word mother with birthing person following the lead of Planned Parenthood. More and more advocates today are calling to provide free tampons and menstrual products to people who menstruate. Do they mean women? I just, I don't know. Also, now that I think about it, shouldn't the word menstruate be womanstrate? Amen and a women, am I right, ladies? We love that. <laughs> the science of the left, and I'm using the word science as a very loose term here, okay? is the most backwards, upside-down, regressive thinking on Earth. Yeah. 
The left says that there are literally infinity genders. What is going on with this z-zim-zer-zippity-doo-dah day situation? I do not know. Every day it changes. The left says that fully grown biological men should be using the same bathroom as a little girl. They say that abortion is health care because it doesn't involve the loss of life. Because according to the left, a baby with a heartbeat in its mother's womb on Earth isn't considered life, but a single cell on Mars is. Alex Clark reminded us at the beginning of this conference that the left says fight like a girl, but they are completely comfortable putting you, a biological woman, in the same boxing ring as biological men, risking your lives to do it. They say, hey, put this thing on your face right after we told you not to and stop asking if it works or not because we really don't care. That medicine, hydroxychloroquine, oh yeah, you know the one that we used to effectively treat other coronaviruses in the past? Cleveland Clinic says it may lead to a 200% higher chance of survival if you have COVID-19 and you're on a ventilator, but the orange guy and conservatives said it's good, so we're gonna go ahead and ban that. Oh, and by the way, if you're 18 to 29 years old, you have a literal 0.0000369% chance, yes, I did the math, of dying from the virus that changed the world this last year. But we're mandating an experimental vaccine for you to set foot back on campus. What is that? The left says, follow the science so intensely all the time. But they don't mean the scientific method, the thing that we all learned in the fourth grade and every single year after that, asking all the right questions, going after as many theories as possible, and then coming to a conclusion. They decide the conclusion up front, go back and find all the facts, data, and statistics to fit their narrative, and shame you and silence you if you even try to question it. Lord Farquaad, I mean Dr. Fauci, says <laughs> that if you question him, you deny science. Ironically, incredibly ironically, all of this is happening at the exact same time the left is insisting to their dying breath that women are systematically under attack because of our gender. I'm honestly still really confused if they're admitting that gender is real or not. So if you have the answer to that, I would really love to follow this mental gymnastics. That because of our biology, we make less money, we have less opportunity, and we are always being oppressed by men. I have a daily show with our Turning Point USA Productions Department called Freedom Seeds. <laughs> where every day in about a minute, I give you guys the facts, the metaphorical ammo, if you will, to go out and win America's culture war. So today, I wanted to give you your ammunition, the facts, to win this war on women and femininity and debunk the fake science the left is using to hold us back. I'm the nerdy science girl, can you blame me? So pull out your notebooks, pull out your phone, do whatever you have to do to write this down because these are facts that you're going to want to remember. And while you're doing that, I want to give you a little spoiler alert. Women are not under attack in America by anyone other than the left. In 1900, only 6%, 6% of women worked outside the home. Recently, for the second time in US history, women have actually surpassed men to make up the majority of the workforce. When we want jobs, we get jobs, because it turns out women are actually 16% more likely to be hired for any job that they've applied for. Yeah. And if that job is more senior than our current job, so we're getting a promotion, that number actually goes up to 18%. Women are rapidly approaching the majority of college graduates in America, and if you're studying you know, gender studies or ethnic studies, that might not mean a lot, but importantly, we already make up the majority of graduates in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Love that for a science speech this morning. Women between the ages of 18 and 34 are the most likely demographic in America to become new gun owners today. And 56% of women in America own at least one semi-automatic pistol. 
Get this, we also lead men in concealed carry permits. We're not waiting for anybody else to protect us and there's no victimization happening here. This one's important, so listen close. Women are not systematically oppressed under law, period. In 1963, not last Tuesday, not an hour ago, but in 1963, Congress passed the Equal Pay Act, which specifically mandates that women cannot earn less than their male counterparts at work based on their gender alone. And that persistent and horrible gender wage gap that the left loves to talk about all the freaking time, where we apparently only make 77 cents on the dollar for every man makes, it's debunked by every major study on the subject because it can be accounted for and it can be explained by the different choices women make in the workplace, what careers we go after, if we decide to have a family or work part-time or take some time off. But wait, there's even more. The Pregnancy Discrimination Act makes it illegal to discriminate against pregnant women in the workplace, and the Family Medical Leave Act says companies with 50 or more employees must allow for both men and women to take up to 12 weeks of family leave to care for their newborn or adopted child. Women actually own 40% of all businesses in the United States. During the last presidential administration, we had the most women serving in senior positions in the White House ever. And today, now, we have the highest number of women in Congress in all of US history. The data and the evidence and the facts and statistics speak volumes. The evidence is right in front of us. So following the actual scientific method, the conclusion is clear, nothing in our culture or society is systematically holding women back simply because of our biology, except the narrative carefully created by the left. Here's the message that I really want you to remember more than anything else from this conference. You do not need anyone's, especially the left's, permission to succeed. You do not need anyone's pity to rise above your circumstances, and you do not need the government holding your hand. The only thing you need is you to live your American dream. You, as a woman, have been entrusted by God with special gifts, yes, as a biological woman, for the contribution that you can make to the world. The left wants you to feel held back by that. We at Turning Point USA and in this conservative movement want you to feel inspired, confident, and empowered because of that, because you were born to change the world. My amazing boss, mentor, and friend, Charlie Kirk, by the way, let's just thank him really quickly for all the work he's done with Turning Point USA. He reminded us yesterday of a very powerful reality, that the greatest weapon in the world is, in fact, the women of America. He's right, you know. Women have been entrusted with so much, but just one of these things is the gift of discernment, of hearing the truth and knowing it when we hear it, of living rooted in the truth each and every day, even in a world that has completely rejected the idea of truth. You may be sitting in this audience and be listening to this incredible lineup of speakers that we have for you this weekend and be thinking, I am so inspired by what all of these people are saying, but I could never do that. I could never know every fact and articulate it perfectly like Charlie Kirk. I could never be larger than life without ever drinking a cup of coffee like Alex Clark. And yes, that's actually true. She doesn't drink coffee. I could never be as poised as Kaylee McEnany or have the most savage comebacks on earth like Candace Owens. I know those thoughts because I had those thoughts when I was sitting in those chairs as a student. But here's the thing. As I've transitioned into my role as a spokesperson for Turning Point USA, an author and a public speaker is this. You don't need any of that. You only need one thing to make a major impact in this conservative movement and change the world. You just have to tell the truth. There is no secret formula to what people like me and every other person up on this stage do every day beyond that. And every single one of you has the tools to do exactly the same thing each and every day. Yeah. That's important. <laughs> Ladies, we can't sit around anymore and just wait for someone else to sit in the driver's seat of American culture. And we need, not want, but we need each and every one of you to fight for our future and our culture on the front lines. 
Speaking of science, I can tell you from experience, having gone from what you guys are experiencing to standing up on this stage, none of this is rocket science. It all just starts with telling the truth to the people in your community, in your high school or college classroom, when you're at church, on social media, anywhere and everywhere. I say this all the time when I speak on college campuses, but having been a Turning Point USA student activist myself and now working full time for the organization, especially in a very public way, I have learned and I believe that the impact you all have when you tell the truth to your communities and engage in this culture war is so much stronger than what anyone up here on this stage has. They just, those people might follow us, they might watch our daily shows on Instagram TV, they might see us on Newsmax or Fox News, but they don't know us. They don't sit next to us in class, they don't live with us in our dorm, they don't eat with us in the dining hall, they don't have Thanksgiving dinner with us around the family dinner table, they certainly don't go to church with us, but they do all of those things with you. And when you boldly stand for truth, they will feel inspired to do exactly the same thing. The greatest weapon in the world is the women of America. And we have the strongest tool in our arsenal to win America's culture war, the truth. We're in the fight for our lives, and we know that it's hard, but I can tell you this, if every single one of us fights on the front lines in this culture war, we will win. Thank you so much. Thank you.